what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i hope you like this video this is going to be your review of <clears throat> the real mm -mm, nope no real housewives love and hip-hop atlanta all right it's a brand new season and we are starting off season nine episode one and so we start this episode off with eva's birthday party so you have mimi you have um Stevie J, you have Ty. I didn't see Faith there, but they are all getting along. They're co-parenting. Eva's having a great time. It's a safari theme. It looks really, really nice. Like the colors are popping. The outfits are really cute. Um, it's all age appropriate. You know what I mean? It's nothing that I would be like, okay, that's ridiculous. That's too much for a little girl. I mean, it's an over-the-top party, but I'm not mad about it. If you can afford it, go for it. Do it. Um and again, if you follow these people on social media, you saw this going down. Like, I remember all these pictures on social media. So, we have Kirk and Rashida. So, their storyline this season, they're celebrating. Because y'all know this is the first episode, so all we're doing is getting caught up. They're celebrating their 20-year um, anniversary. They're going to have a party. Their party happens later on in this episode. And they, the restaurant that they opened up, they got the kids running the restaurant and... They, you know, they're worried about it because the kids, of course, aren't taking it as seriously as they should be taking it, you know, um, and they've had some complaints or whatever. And, of course, you know, the rest, the turnover rate in a restaurant is really high. Restaurants, a lot of times, don't stay in business long. And so that's a concern that they're having. The other thing that's with their storyline this season is Preston Atlanta is doing well, but Preston Houston not doing so great. And come to find out their mama has started her own business selling plus slot plus size clothing using the same vendor that they use them for pressed. Now, they're saying that it's an issue and that if this been anybody else, that person would be fired. I don't know a lot about retail, but I don't see how that's an issue. If she's still showing up for work one time and she's still doing her job as far as press is concerned, why she can't start her own business using y'all's vendors? Especially if she's buying different clothing. I've never been into a press store, but I know that y'all are not a, a plus size store. Y'all might have some plus size items, but y'all are not a plus size store. So if she has started her own business focusing on plus sizes, I'm just not sure why that's an issue. But I'm sure I'll find out as the episode or the season goes on. Jock and Kendra, they're planning the wedding. However, comma, Kendra is on this. I need to make sure that you, we, you know, we're not having any more kids. I need to make sure you know that you know that you know and you're serious. So she wants them to have a vasectomy and Jock is just not feeling it. Um, they end up going to the doctor and Jock goes through the whole, you know, what it is, what it is, uh, what has to happen. You know, that whole, the pre-op situation. And Jock is like, yeah, I'm just not feeling it. And, of course, Kendra's like, well, if you love me, you'll do this. And he was like, well, if you don't want no kids, why won't you do it? Now, from a from a medical point of view, the vasectomy is less evasive on a woman's body than a woman getting her tubes tied. However, comma, in this situation, since Kendra doesn't want the kids and she knows that she knows that she knows, I'm not... Sure, I'm mad at Jock for throwing that out there. If you want to know the truth of the matter. But anyway, so that's going to be their little storyline. So let's go check in on the Scrappies, okay? We have Mom and Daddy Scrappy, you know, Bambi Scrappy, Braylon. Braylon's 18 months. He's, you know, you know, they doing the whole family thing. Mama D shows up. Now, we've heard that Mama D has been sick. Come to find out she had a kidney stone that ruptured or something but it was brought on by her alcohol that they say alcoholism so that her her alcohol her drinking too much alcohol led to whatever she has going on and she's had three surgeries she's getting ready to go in for a fourth surgery she had an infection she's been having it kind of rough she's walking with a walker honey she's been having it kind of rough and so um you know scrappy is like look i need you to do what you're supposed to do you know like i I need you to be here. You're the only mom I got. I need you to get it together. I need you to stop drinking. I need you to listen to what the doctors are telling you to do. And he even gives her dad on breathalyzer test at one time. But Mama D is like, look, I'm here you. I'm here for it. You know, and she hadn't been drinking. I mean, she passed the breathalyzer with no problem. Um, and so that's kind of where they are with everything. 
as far as um scrapping bambi they seem to be doing really well we know in real life she pregnant again honey well i can say in real life but in present time um so they seem to be doing pretty well now sierra in her situation so what we find out is that sierra had a situation at was it was it the funeral we know her ex-husband what was her ex-husband's name briscoe was it briscoe her ex-husband son died a few years back you know that was shown out on the show and everything and come to find out she had gotten into a fight at something i don't i, the, I don't know if it was the wake the funeral something with briscoe's other baby mama and I'm not sure if this is the woman that he was cheating on her with or what. I don't remember all those details. But her court case is finally coming up. And her thing is, I need Briscoe to testify and let them know how it all went down. Because right now it's my word against hers. And we need, you know, an outside um, person to kind of just show um, that it wasn't me, that I didn't do it. So she shows up at an event. They're having some sort of, I guess, a bowling event for it. it was his son's 20. It would have been his son's 23rd birthday. And she's talking to him about it. And she's like, look, I know things aren't great between us, but I need you to come to court and testify. And he was like, nope, not doing it. Hell no. Nah. You weren't there for me when I feel like you needed to be there for me. So nope, I don't have nothing for you. Because he feels like Sierra wasn't there for him when his son died. And Sierra's thing is, I was there for you. You know, you wanted me to be there for you like in bed like your wife there for you and i wasn't gonna be there for you like that and he's like no um i mean this i'm adding to from last season okay but he tells her he was like no nah. i said you know when my son was in court and i needed you to be there like you didn't come to court she was like i couldn't come to court because she was with you and i didn't want to have another situation i didn't want to have another altercation and he was like yeah nah whatever you're gonna have to find somebody else because i ain't testifying now here's what's messed up in the confessional he says that Sierra ain't do nothing wrong. That Sierra didn't start the situation. She was just defending herself or whatever. But I ain't going to court. She wasn't there for me when I needed her. So I ain't going to court. And I'm like, that is some real bitch shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's real messed up that you know this woman didn't do nothing wrong. Yet because you mad and you and your feelings, you're not going to come down to court and testify and make sure she doesn't get caught up in something that she didn't do. Because she said that she potentially could be going to court, I mean, going to jail for, I think she said something like a year or something like that. So it's, because the girl was pregnant at the time. And y'all know it's a whole different situation when the woman's pregnant and there's an altercation. Um, so they end up going on a double date, Sierra and BK um bambi and um and scrappy because sierra said you know her and cardi used to be real tight but um cardi hasn't really been around a lot and they haven't really been hanging out as much and that um her her and bambi have gotten closer over the the time since her and carly has kind of been m.i.a so they having a double date, and at the double date, Sierra opens up to, to Bambi and let her know how serious the situation is as far as her going to court. Um, Briscoe not showing up. She said, I really need, you know, and I, I, I want to say at this point is when she says she needs Carly to be there for her. I don't remember if that's when she said it or not. But, you know, she goes on to say that, um, she goes on to say that, um, you know, it's really serious and that she really could go to jail if the situation doesn't go her way. So, um, and of course they say all the right things. Oh, girl, you're going to be okay. Oh, girl, ain't nothing going to happen to you. Oh, we got your back. Whatever, whatever. So, Kirk and Rashida's party. They're having this party. Everything is cool. You know, it's all black love. Everything is everything. All they all happy. Um, Jock is, is, is talking to the guys and telling the guys how, you know, he's not looking forward to having a vasectomy and that, you know, he's upset by the situation and how things with him and Kendra, you know, Kendra been acting funny since I proposed, you know, she done turned into somebody I don't know ever since I proposed, like this ain't the Kendra that I fell in love with kind of situation. And, um, then we have Carly 
Sierra comes in and Sierra's telling Carly, like, look, ain't nobody seen you in a month of Sundays. What's up? And Carly's like, oh, girl, you know I've been here for you. And Sierra's like, no, you ain't been for being here for me. I've been needing you. You ain't been around. Girl, I'm here now. What you need? And she said, well, you know, you were there that day that I had the altercation with Briscoe's baby mama. And I need you to come to court and testify. Oh, girl, you know I got you. Girl, I got you. Whatever you need, I am there. Next thing you know. Alexis Sky shows up with Akbar. Now Alexis Sky says, "I know last time y'all saw me, I was in New York with somebody selling me a bunch of dreams, but you know that that music thing was just a fade. I'm really just here, you know, about my daughter and taking care of my daughter." You thought we thought you were serious about the music. You thought we thought. Anyway. But she got beef with Carly. Now. This is some crazy storyline that's contrived, clearly contrived, made up. At, you know, we know. But the storyline is something about Carly's mo, who she's still with. I thought they broke up last season, but they still together. Somehow or another... Alexis used to mess with him or something or whatever and somehow now she got beef with Carly So she comes walking up in the party that she ain't invited to that. She said she wasn't invited to She comes walking through the party and starts kicking off her shoes to run up on Carly and of course, you know, they holding Carly back on the couch and Carly yelling. I'm about that life I'm about that life. You got um um, 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 security push, pulling Sky out. She done kicked her shoes off. Then you got Akbar over on the sideline talking to Kirk and Rashida like, hey, how y'all doing? What's up? Like, she don't know what's about to go down. And she don't know what's about to be a problem. And, of course, Kirk and Rashida are like, what the fuck? Like, I don't even know you. You done rolled up into my party on some old fuck shit. And I don't, I don't even know you. So... Um, that's pretty much that, that last but not least, cause child, y'all again, y'all know this is just the overviews, honey, it, they, they ain't getting into nothing deep, child. Um, we found out that Akbar had sleeve surgery. She said she couldn't have a drink and she just had her sleeve surgery. And I noticed that she lost a lot of weight, but I didn't know it was from surgery. I thought she was really like getting in the gym and, and that kind of thing. But either way, she looked good. I ain't, I mean, however you do it, boo, however you do it. Um, Last but not least, we see Carly. Carly talking about how hard her life has been, how much she's gone through, how horrible things have been for her, and nobody knows what she's been going through, and how, um, um, she just don't know what it is, her and Mo, and so I guess her and Mo still together. And then next thing you know, we see her standing in front of a casket, and all of a sudden, here come, you know, Rashida, Mimi, like, all the all the ladies start coming through, and the ladies are like, what is, you know, what are, what's going on? Why would we be invited to this? What's got, what's Carly, what's, you know, like, nobody knows why Carly invited them to this funeral home, and there's a casket in the front of the church. Now, remember Carly's dad was sick. I really think it's her father. I do not think that is by any stretch of the imagination her father's real funeral, but I think that her father has passed away, and I think that that's what that whole scene is going to be about. Now, in the previews, this say something about her saying she'd been married for a year. Maybe her and Mo went off and eloped, and she didn't tell nobody because she knew how people felt about Mo. And that, you know, Carly, okay. Because, I mean, that would be around, like, the reunion was, was what? The reunion for last season would have been around April. So maybe they have gone off and, and eloped at some point. April, May or something like that. So maybe they have gone off and eloped. But anyway, that's what it was, y'all. That's the first episode, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. <sighs> A new season has begun, honey. A new season has begun. Let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments. Peace.